everyone, welcome to an episode of the Rails API series. All right, finally we're back in happy land. So um, we're back on doing Rails API and makes me very happy because I get to write Ruby code. Um, so basically in this episode right here, we're going to be uh, creating the endpoint for user creation. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, you know, we need our user to be able to um, you know, sign up. Like, you know, if you look at our invoiced application over here, like we want to create the endpoint for this basically, like to, um, you know, if are you if someone is new to our system, they can type in an email and a password, click sign up, and they'll do user creation and go to the process of confirming their email and all that stuff. But we need to create the endpoint to go with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back into the code over here, and we're in a Ruby code. Um, so what I'm going to do is in the V1, this is our API, I'm going to create a new file called users controller RB. Um, so basically, uh, let's take a look at pause. So I've created a sample request over here for user creation. And it's going to be a post request uh, with three fields, so email, password, and password confirmation. Um, so we know that we need to basically um, send you know, like these three parameters in order to get everything working. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, if I make the request right now, you'll see we get a 404. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, so I'm going to head over into the code over here. I'm going to go into the routes. And basically here, I'm going to do a resources users uh, only create. So uh, we're only going to do user creation over here. So that's why we're doing that. Uh, so here I'm going to do module v1 and and then class users controller inherit. I believe it's application controller. Indeed it is. And and here we're going to do dev create and we're going to have a private function over here user param and uh, params that require user permit email password password confirmation so if you're not aware of what I'm doing here uh, check out our rails foundation series you need to go through that before you can do any of this stuff over here um, so here, uh, so we need to correct our, so we go back to paw over here. I need to do something like this. So user email. Actually, I can just do something like this and then do user and then put the email inside. or not. So let's just do user email, user password, and user password confirmation. So essentially, um, if everything works correctly, we want to get a 201, right? So if I do this now, I'm going to get a, a 204 no content because it's I created the endpoint, I got the controller, uh, but it's not really doing anything. So what we want to do is here user equals user dot new uh, user params, and then here I want to do if user dot save, and then we want to return a. Uh, so basically, if everything works correctly, uh, we want to do a uh, render create else. We want to turn a head unprocessable. Entity. So this is returning a 404, uh, 422. Uh, so basically, if everything works correctly, we're going to return render a create. So what that means, we need to go into the view, v1, new folder users, and then do um, a create. So create.json.jbuilder. And then here we're going to do json.data do end. And then basically, here we can do a um, JSON dot user do end, and here we can do JSON dot email user dot email, 
um, and then we want to do a json.id user.id. Uh, so if everything works correctly, um, we should be getting this response. So let's give that a go. Uh, getting a 404 bad request. Params is missing. So user ah so it's not it's not doing that because it's a it's a it's a JSON. Um, I want to be a little bit more explicit, and this is just not um, explicit enough. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So here I want to do a user. So I'm going to change the way we make that request to be a little bit more specific. Uh, so that should be okay. Uh, let's try and send that request. So blah, four, five, six. So let me go back here, delete pry. And if everything works correctly, we should be okay. Ah, so now everything is working. So now I use a JSON and I'm able to create, so based on the text, it created the nested user uh, for me. And then basically now, uh, what's happening is it's sending the request correctly. So if we go back over here, you can see that um, you know the user parameter is now correct. So we have to actually send it correctly from the client side, and that's they, that's basically what happened. I relied on um, this guy on Paw to do the right thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm supposed to create a nested key over here, and now everything just works. So you can see here that we got a response with the ID three blah four five six. Um, so basically now we need to write some code on the front end uh, in order to connect to this back end. So everything is working now uh, on the back end side of things. Uh, and, you know, like we're going to optimize and do all this, you know, like clean this up a little bit later. For now, we just want to get stuff to work. Um, so everything is now working on our back end API. Uh, you know, we can create a new user. Uh, then we need to handle, you know, like, email confirmations and all that stuff as well. So I'm going to show you guys to do that in the in the upcoming episodes, as you already know. Um, so yeah, in, in the next episode, we're going to switch back to our client side and write our store again, um, you know, to connect to this endpoint and accept the data from the form and basically send it to our endpoint and then say, yay, you're registered, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now confirm your email and all that stuff. All right, if you found that useful, like uh, and share our video uh, and also become a member to get access to all of our content. Uh, without any further ado, I want to wrap it up and I'll see you guys in the next episode.